Last night we stayed in uh, the Bear in Ryder. It's a pretty nice pub. And uh, yeah, highly recommend it. Nice little B&B. &B. They've even got um, somewhere for you to store your bikes. And action. My vlog. Today, the Welsh Rodeo Championships in Slandrudna Wells. When did I do this race last? 2012, I told you in it. 2012, I was a junior. First was, um, what's his name again? I told you. I don't remember names. What's his name? I'm really bad at names. You chased Gareth him. McGuinness. Gareth yeah. McGuinness was first uh, from North Wales. Then it was Dan Pearson, um, and then I was third. And it was like this long, gradual downhill for the last two k for the line. And like, cause, cause the juniors were into the seniors. Me and Dan were like looking at each other because we were both juniors. And like Gareth like attacked the two k to go, and he was just like drag racing away from us. So we looked at each other, and we like we said, "Well, we're gonna have to work together." So we started working together, and we started pulling him back, and got to like the last seven hundred meters. And I just went really early because I wasn't a sprinter. That's still. Still not a sprinter, but anyway, we like chased after him, and then we got really close, and it was like one big lunge for like that was the last time I did it, 2012. But we're back, finally, and uh, today is really short. Uh, I'm quite surprised at how short it is. It's only 67 miles or 110k, I think. Awesome. Charlie's doing a martial duties. Uh, for two of the four laps, and then she's gonna be in the feed zone um, for me for a ball if I need one. Um, but I don't think so. It's pretty cool outside, very windy. It's on a similar course to the time trial yesterday, and it's pretty hilly. But that won't necessarily suit me now. It used to, but it won't now. Hundred Not Wells National Welsh, the Welsh National Cycle Museum is right here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Somewhere. So we start here, we roll out, it's pretty undulating, this is a big main road, but it's going to be a block headwind. Nap Mel, we turn left, and all of this is a lane, so I've no idea what this is going to be like, pretty choppy. And then we take a sharp left, and then we're on the road that we were on the time trial. The time trial started here yesterday, so we're going to do this kind of, I don't know, maybe half of the main road that we did yesterday. Still following the TT course, we bear left, and we head up this bit of road, all of this is a climb. And that's probably going to be the deciding factor in the last few K because from like here to the finish in the industrial estate, I know how glamorous, uh, it's like really fast downhill. So whoever's kind of active here in the last lap is going to stay away to here. So my game plan is to, well, first of all, play by year. I've no idea what I'm going to be like because the longest race I've done so far is an hour. And that was on that Pembrey circuit a few weeks ago. So this race is going to be like two and a half, three hours. So I'm going to have to play it by year. Um, obviously, I've not lost like every bit of fitness, but I'm I'm going to follow things. I'm going to I'm not going to attack myself. I'm just going to follow, 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 and then the last lap we'll see where we are. If we're in a chasing group, I'll try and jump across, depending on how I feel. If I'm not, I'm just going to have to deal with the reality of the fact that I'm not quite there yet. So. If it comes to it, that long drag, regardless of my fitness, it should still suit me anyway because, you know, as much fitness as you lose, you don't lose muscle memory and stuff, so I should still be able to um, do a good ride, hopefully. Um, but it means nothing before the race. We have to see what happens during the race. I'll have to shout at you when you're at the side of the road and say, I'm feeling good! I'm feeling crap! <laughs> I won't do that. 
absolutely glowing and it's about 20 sizes too big. That's a whistle. It's like having a giant buttercup. Is that what they are? Buttercups and the uh, yeah. it's like <laughs> it's like having one of those. <laughs> Once we descended that, we got on the main road. We then had um, a big climb to deal with. However, the bunch had caught us just before this this uh, this big climb, which we were a little bit gutted about um, because we put so much effort in to get across the brink. So, in a bit of a vain attempt, I went to the front and I tried to just like drag us, um, you know, drag us on to kind of stop that split, to stop the stop that bunch from coming across to us um, but it didn't really work but luckily when they got on to us we were just about to hit that kind of that three four minute climb that we did in the time trial yesterday so once we got over the climb and I was like 10th I knew that like a lot of people wouldn't get back on because we'd just come over a climb and it was like almost straight straight downhill so I knew I was kind of in a I knew I was in good company so on that little kicker that we just passed earlier, I went up at the outside and I just treated like the top of it as the finish. Uh, it went downhill pretty rapidly then, so I was able to pick up a lot of speed. But um, I think that's where I suffered the most, you know. Like usually that's like my forte. Like I can I can keep power going over the top of a climb and on a climb. And then once you get over it, you go down, and I'm able to keep it up or at least build a little bit of momentum. Also being I used to be a small guy, I'm not like 65 kilos, but like that would be, you know, where I could make uh, make the most advantage. But this time, you know, I just gassed myself, you know, just doing that effort initially. I couldn't recover, um, so I was kind of soft tapping on that descent. I couldn't really press on. The group split a little bit and then we kind of came back together at the bottom of that descent. And then it was kind of up and down to the finish. And Ended up being like a little bit of a sprint finish, but like a strung out sprint finish. So it was never like it was never. Um, you know, it was the kind of sprint where you come around the last corner and that's your finishing position. Even though there's 150, 200 meters to go, you haven't got enough time. 
time to come around people because it's all in one line so that's the way it ended but I'm really positive I'm a little bit starstruck like a little bit shell shocked didn't think I'd be able to um, obviously but yeah I just didn't think I'd be able to I know to a lot of to a lot of people watching this I know a few of you who race today will be watching this and you're probably thinking you know you're a professional cyclist and it's what you do for a living so you should be good anyway even after time off and I get what you're saying but I'm still human it doesn't make it any easier for me so um, you know I'm I'm humbled in a way that I can still be there on very little training and I shouldn't really be there so but it's good practice for me being that I've got to race a little bit more intelligently because of my lack of fitness than, um, than anything else. Uh, aside from that, anything else you want to know uh, about the race or about my comeback um, after doing the TT yesterday? Didn't feel didn't feel too good today. My legs were pretty wrecked, so that's how my legs felt. Um, I drank two bottles, two 500 ml bottles of water. Um, that's not ideal either. The race was two and a half hours. Uh, but Charlie was marshalling, so we didn't have anybody in the feed zone. Um, and my pockets are absolutely stuffed with bars. And I ate like three bars. I must have had 10 bars in my pocket. So again, nutritionally, I wasn't on it either. So. Doing the bug snorkeling thing this weekend. What do you eat, Dan? What do you know, it's a chocolate protein. Chocolate yeah. protein. Chocolate. A Galaxy bar is not chocolate protein. It's not. It's not. 